Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man throws a seed on the land, night and day while he sleeps. When he is awake, the seed is sprouting and growing. How? He does not know. Of its own accord, the land produces first the shoot then the air, then the full grain in the air. And when the crop is ready, he loses no time. He starts to reap because the harvest has come. He also said, what can we say the kingdom of God is like? What parable can we find for it? It is like a mustard seed which at the time of its sowing in the soil is the smallest of all the seeds on earth, yet once it is sown, it grows into the biggest shrub of them all and puts out big branches so that the birds of the air can shelter in its shade. Using many parables like these, he spoke the word to them so far as they were capable of understanding it. He would not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything to his disciples when they were alone. The good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved in Christ, St. Paul tells us in the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7, a very powerful verse that we often use. Paul says, for we live by faith and not by sight. There, uh, Joseph Goldstein tells this, this wonderful um, parable of an old rabbi who crossed the village, a village square each morning on his way to the temple to pray. One morning, a Cossack, a Cossack is a military person from the Ukrainian area, accosted him saying, hey rabbi, where are you going? And the old rabbi said, I don't know. The Cossack was furious. Don't get smart with me, he says. Every morning for 25 years, you have crossed this square to go to the temple to pray. You know very well where you are going. Then this Cossack grabbed the old man by his coat, cloak, his coat and dragged him off to jail just as he was about to throw the rabbi into a cell, the rabbi turned to him saying, see what I mean? I don't know. I didn't know I was coming to jail. The truth is that, beloved in Christ, we can plan our lives, but we cannot guarantee these plans. Prior to March 2020, beloved in Christ, none of us, nobody knew or predicted that COVID-19 pandemic would have disrupted our personal lives, would have disrupted national, regional, and global lives. We don't know. Today's scripture readings, beloved in Christ, exhorts disciples of Jesus Christ to rely on faith as we negotiate life's unexpected, chaotic, turbulent circumstances, or as Pope Francis puts it, these stoppages of life or these COVID moments of life. The readings help disciples of Jesus Christ to rely on faith as we negotiate these unexpected moments of life like us, the nation of Judah was engaged in many political, religious, social, communal, 
activities and plans, as we heard in the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. They were a prosperous nation. As the chapter before today's scripture reading tells us, and it reads, you had ornaments of gold and silver. You were clothed, you were clothed with embroidered linen and silk. You ate bread made from the best flour and had honey and olive oil to eat. They were a prosperous nation. They were living life as if it was, would last forever. But this prosperous lifestyle was not guaranteed to last forever. The unexpected trauma and drama of the exile arrived and they were totally emotionally and religiously devastated as they were carted off into exile for 40 years in Babylon. This was a life stoppage moment for the nation of Judah. It was a COVID moment for them. And so in the midst of this exile, in the midst of this COVID moment, how did Ezekiel help them to walk by faith and not by sight? Using a horticultural metaphor, Israel presents an allegory of the cedar tree. Ezekiel preaches, Yahweh will take from the crest, from the very top of the cedar, he will cut off from the top of the cedar and he will take this plant that he has cut off and he will plant it on a high and lofty mountain and this little plant will put out branches and bear fruits that birds will come, nations will come and shelter under it. In a word, beloved in Christ, the prophet speaks of a remnant. The prophet speaks of a small group of people that will become the source of new life after the exile. New life for the people of Israel. This small group, this remnant, are persons who believe that their COVID-like situation of imprisonment in exile is not the final chapter. It's not the end. And so their fidelity to Yahweh, their faithfulness to Yahweh will help them to witness something new that will emerge, something new that will come forth after the dark night of the exile. As a convert to Christianity and a fervent disciple of Jesus Christ, Paul of all the person least anticipated a stoppage, a COVID-like moment in his ministry in which he experienced, as we are seeing as the backdrop of the second reading, falls attacks against his apostleship and against his mission to the Gentile. In other words, there were persons who were saying to Paul, you are not an apostle. How can you identify yourself as an apostle? And so today is a second reading, focuses on the suffering that Paul goes through, what is called the apostolic suffering that leads him to speak about his confident hope of the resurrection. In other words, what Paul is preaching in the second reading is that in the, in the face of suffering, in the face of these attacks, Paul is confident because God will replace his suffering body with the resurrected body. And so Paul is confident in the midst of suffering. His faith informs him that notwithstanding his own suffering in this physical body, he anticipates the resurrected body. And that's what gives Paul confidence as he goes through his own COVID moment. 
Consequently, in the face of suffering, Paul tells the Corinthians, we need to walk by faith and not by sight. Why? Because Jesus Christ is not dead, but Jesus Christ is alive. So for Paul, beloved in Christ, walking by faith in the midst of his own COVID-like moment means choosing trust in God over certainty. Because in life, there is no certainty. In Mark's gospel, beloved in Christ, Jesus presents his disciples two parables that helps to understand the power of faith in recognizing the presence of the kingdom of God. And by the kingdom of God, Mark is not referring to a place. By the kingdom of God, Mark is referring to the person and the mission of Jesus Christ, the reign of God in the person and mission of Jesus Christ. And so in the first parable, uh, Jesus speaks about a man who scatters seeds, goes to sleep, rises the next morning to see that the seed begins to sprout. And Jesus ends the parable by saying he does not know how it sprouted. In other words, the farmer, the man, cannot see the actual sprouting. But he goes off to sleep knowing that it will sprout, believing that it will sprout. And he wakes up and he sees it sprouting. And so the fundamental lesson, beloved in Christ, about the kingdom of God in the midst of COVID-like moments is that if disciples choose to trust God instead of relying upon themselves, then they will witness unimaginable new things happening. In the second parable, Jesus utilizes again an agricultural metaphor of the mustard seed, one of the tiniest seed that is able to produce a shrub large enough for the birds of the air to come and shelter and find shade. And so this parable, beloved in Christ, speaks of the work of disciples. That as disciples, our work begins with small and ordinary actions. Not grandiose actions, but very small, ordinary actions in our day-to-day -day lives. But eventually, these small actions of mercy and compassion, of kindness and justice, these very small actions, beloved in Christ, will grow so large. At the final consummation, so as Having reflected on these three very incredible, awesome, and powerful scripture readings from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, and from Mark's gospel, how do these scripture readings challenge the church to mission, especially during our COVID-19 moments of life? How? We need to nourish our faith in this moment. As simple as that. Or as Paul puts it in another way, we need to fan into flame the gift of faith. That little faith, that little spark of faith in a charcoal, during these COVID times, we need to spend time fanning that little spark and do not allow it to be extinguished. How can we do this? Two things. First, I believe, beloved in Christ, that we need to grow up. We need to mature in our understanding of prayer. You know, Bernard, George Bernard Shaw um, writes that most people do not pray 
they only beg. This way of prayer really does not work because when we beg God and it does not happen, we begin to wonder why God does this to me? Why did I do, what did I do to deserve this? Why doesn't God fix it? How is it that God ignores my prayer? When we pray like this, it leads to that. This may lead to further depression and frustration. We may stop praying. We may stop going to church. We may stop participating in religious activities. We may stop um, joining a, a, the virtual masses. We may just stop anything religious because God has not answered our prayer. We're depressed, we're frustrated. So we need to grow up. We need to mature and move from seeing prayer as simply begging. The second thing is that we need to grow into understanding that the purpose of prayer is to deepen our faith. Enough. Beloved in Christ, prayer enables us to live life differently. Prayer is not about, enables us to develop and invest and put trust over certainty. If we reflect deeply for John, during his own COVID moment in the Garden of Olives, prior to his suffering and, and crucifixion, a depression that many of us are going through right now in this COVID time, we come to understand that this depression is not a loss of faith, but depressions and frustrations that we go through are moments of faith, are moments of faith. To put our trust in believing that the seed of faith planted in the darkness of depression will sprout. Because in the darkness of the soil of this pandemic and this lockdown, the kingdom of God is like a seed the farmer has planted that will one day sprout into something new. And you and I must be part of that remnant that Ezekiel speaks about to witness that newness that will come. And that is coming. So as we wait for this new sprouting, as we wait for this newness to occur, beloved in Christ, let us use this time wisely, not to be, not with wasting time with idle and irresponsible living, but let us nourish, let us nourish the soil within which that seed of faith has been planted. Let us nourish it with, nourish it with faithful prayer life, with getting the vaccine, supporting each other, supporting those in our families, in our communities, in our societies who are weak and vulnerable, following the protocols, these simple actions are ways of nourishing the faith during these dark days of the pandemic, these acts, beloved in Christ, represents planting, the planting of our own mustard seed in that dark soil of the pandemic that awaits to sprout one day. Let us pray that we will be a part of that small group that Ezekiel spoke about, that remnant who remain faithful because of our faith, remain faithful because we believe that while we go through this dark night, that that seed is growing and it's, that is about to happen in this world, in our lives, in our society, in our nation, and in our families. Amen.